Query selector and query selector all have the huge advantage of using CSS selectors to grab DOM elements. Sometimes I think we forget the power of this because we seldom use what it is capable of. In this tutorial, we are going to look at using pseudo classes with query selector all as a small reminder of what is possible. I think we're all used to using query selector and query selector all for particular tags, classes, or IDs. However, we may seldom use other CSS selectors. If you are well versed in CSS selectors, you can apply those when using query selector and query selector all. Let's look at using pseudo classes as an example of what is possible. First, let me show you an HTML page. Here we simply have a heading and then we have a UL tag with several LI tags which give us our bulleted list there. Here is what that particular HTML page looks like. Here are all of the LI tags. Now let's look at what we can do with that using some pseudo classes. So first, let's say I wanted to add an event listener to the first, third, and fifth bullet list. So every other bullet item I wanted to add an event listener to for some reason. Let's see how we might accomplish that. So first we're going to use query selector all on document. And what we're going to pass in is li colon, and then here's where we're going to use a pseudo class. And we'll use nth child. Nth child allows us to specify which of the children we want to grab. And there are a lot of things we can do with that. I'm going to start off by just putting odd. We can use odd or even inside of parentheses to indicate that we want every odd or every even child. So we'll use odd to begin with. Let's see what we get with that. Now that we have those selected, what I'm going to do is convert this to an array so I can use for each with it. Now there is another tutorial I've done that talks about converting to an array like this. And I can provide a link to that in the description of this tutorial. So once that's converted to an actual array, instead of a node list, then we can cycle through each of those items using for each. For each is a higher order function which cycles through each element in the array. And the way we use it is we pass in a function. We pass in a function that will act on each of those elements as it iterates through all of those elements. So I'm going to pass in a function that will accept the element as a parameter. Once again, I can provide a link to a tutorial on some of these array methods as well in the description section. Now for each element in the array, I'm going to add an event listener for the click event. And I'm going to pass in a function that that will execute when that click event happens. So starting to get a little messy with the, all the callbacks we're using here, but this will be the last one. All I'm going to have it do is display to the console the text contents of that tag. Okay. So really quick, what we're doing is we're iterating through each element in the array. Those elements that are in the array are the odd li tags. So we're going through each one of those. It passes the element in. Then we add an event listener to that element right here. And the event is click. So whenever we click on that, it's going to fire this function. And all that function does is log to the console the contents, the text contents of that tag. 
All right, let's save that and just take a look and see what happens. So I'm going to refresh and open up the console here. And then if I click on the first one, we get this is step one. If I click on the second one, nothing happens because it didn't pick that one up. The third one, it is there. Four, no, five, yep, six, no. Okay, so we were able to select all of the odd ones. Now, what's another way we could use this pseudo class? Well, let's put 2n in here. And this refers to every second child. So if we save that, let's see what we get. Refresh. Nothing on the first one. The second one, however, yes. And the fourth one, not the third one. So it's it's doing every other one, but it's doing the even ones. It'd be like putting even in there. However, if we wanted to indicate that we want it to start with the very first child, we can add this to it. Now see, these are all CSS selectors and they're supported by query selector all. That's what I'm trying to illustrate here is the types of things we can do with query selector all. So let's refresh that again. And sure enough, we're getting back to every odd one, but doing it slightly different way. Now let's say we wanted to get a specific, say we wanted number four and that is all. Well, we could simply enter four in here. Save that, refresh. None of these work, but when we get to step four, it does have an event listener attached to it. Let's try one last pseudo class. This time we'll just get the first child. That will obviously get the first one. So another way to grab that first one we could put a number in there for the nth child, but we can also use pseudo class of first child and grab that first one. So my purpose is to illustrate what is possible with query selector and query selector all simply by using CSS selectors. Now, if you're not familiar with CSS selectors, I would recommend that you get familiar with them and review them because they can be quite powerful with if you're working with a lot of DOM elements. Now, I think a great source for this is the W3C schools reference as shown here. You can see it shows all of the different types of CSS selectors we can use, including pseudo classes, which is what we used in this example, but there are a bunch of others. So you can refer to that site to refresh your knowledge of CSS selectors and become more aware of what you can do with query selector and query selector all. Now, if you found this video helpful, go ahead and give it a like. To continue learning, here are a few suggestions. First, you can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, click the circle link on the left. I release a new tutorial each week. And if you're ready to dive into a full course, click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com. Thanks for watching.